Hi, I'm Monica from Hackster. Welcome to our second video focused on training teachers how to use the micro bit. Today we're going to focus on the code. If you don't have a tech background, you might feel a bit nervous about teaching students to code. We want to show you that code is nothing more than commands to make your micro bit do what you want it to do. Open your browser and go to microbit.org. Click on the Let's Code button at the top of the screen. Microbit lets you code in two separate languages, JavaScript, which we'll go over today, and Python, which we'll get into next time. You can also control your Microbit wirelessly from your phone using the Android and iOS apps. JavaScript is a popular language most commonly used for web development. The JavaScript editor for Microbit includes blocks. We'll be focusing on using these in today's tutorial. If you've used MIT Scratch or RGBlock in the past, these will look familiar. Microbit provides a handy reference for what each command does. Right-click the reference button under the header, JavaScript Blocks Editor, to open it in a new tab. Keep that open while we're coding so you can go back and look at it if needed. Let's start coding in JavaScript Blocks. Click the orange Let's Code button. This will open the JavaScript coding window where you'll see some pieces that look a bit like puzzle pieces. These are microbit blocks. Blocks are a visual programming language, or VPL. These drag and drop pieces make it easy for students to quickly get started controlling their microbit. If you click on the JavaScript tab at the top of the window, you'll see the actual code behind your blocks. This makes it easy for students to transition to coding in JavaScript when they're ready. Click on blocks to go back to the blocks view. If you click the orange Getting Started button at the right top corner of your screen, there is a quick and easy tutorial that interactively shows you the basics of how to use the blocks. We are going to assume you've already done this. If you haven't, pause this video and complete the tutorial. Hopefully, the Getting Started tutorial showed you just how easy it is to build interactive programs using the JavaScript blocks. In the tutorial, you made a die that selects a random number when you shake the micro bit. And you program the micro bit to show a smiley face when button B is pressed. In today's video, I will show you how to make a thermometer with your micro bit. Let's create a new project by clicking Projects and New Project. On the bottom of your screen, click the word Untitled and rename your project Thermometer. Click Save. By default, the on, start, and forever blocks are our starting point. These two blocks are called event handlers. They respond to an event. For instance, the on, start event handler responds once when the code is fired up on the micro bit. It will look for and read through any blocks within the on, start event handler as soon as the program is started. The forever event handler behaves similarly but instead of reading through any blocks once, it loops them over and over and over again until a new program is uploaded or the micro bit is unplugged. If you have questions about what a block does, you can hover your mouse over it to get more info. You can also right click and select help to be taken to the reference page. Hide the reference by clicking the arrow tab. You can always get back to the reference page by clicking the reference tab here. We want to read the temperature using the microbit's onboard temperature sensor and show the number on our LED screen. The first thing we have to do is make a variable for the temperature value. A variable is basically a container that holds information. You can see the options for different blocks in this panel here. Click on Variable and choose Make a Variable. It's best to label a variable with short but descriptive names. We will call our variable temp, short for temperature. Click OK. Now, if we go back to our variable menu, our variable will show up there. We want the temp variable to constantly update with data from our temperature sensor. To make it do this, select the Set Variable To block from Variables. Go to our Input blocks and select the Temperature input. Replace the 0 in the Set Variable To block 
with the temperature input. Select the temp variable from the variable dropdown to set temp to the temperature. Inputs and outputs are what make Microbit fun, since they allow you to interact with the world around you. The Microbit can read data from the physical world using its onboard light sensor, accelerometer, compass, buttons, and of course, temperature sensor. These are all inputs. LEDs, music, and most of the basic blocks are outputs. Now we're going to add an output. We'll start by going to the basic blocks menu and grabbing the show number output. Place it on your editor. We want to show the number that's being saved in your temp variable. Select your temp variable from the variables blocks. Drag and drop temp to replace the zero in the show number block with our temperature. Drag and drop this to your onstart event handler. Press the download button to download your code as a .hex file. When you download the code, it gets compiled from JavaScript into ones and zeros that the Megabit can store and execute. Hex, or Intel Hex, is a file format commonly used for programming microcontrollers. You can also share your code by clicking Share. This creates a link to a page where your code exists online. You can share this link with others if you'd like to share your code. Before uploading your code to your microbit, make sure you have plugged your microbit into your computer. Find the microbit on your computer. You can find it in the Devices panel. Find the code in the download folder of your computer. Drag the downloaded code over to our microbit, just like dragging and dropping a file to an external drive or USB stick. You should see a yellow light flashing next to your USB. This means the code is being transferred. As soon as the code uploads, you should see the temperature in Celsius scrolling across the LEDs continuously. What if we wanted to sound an alarm if the temperature gets too hot? We would use the logic blocks for that. Select the if-then logic block at the top of the list. When you drag it to the canvas, you'll notice that these blocks are grayish hued. If you remove the temperature code from the onstart event handler, it also turns grayish. That means they'll be excluded from the final code, since they must be within an event handler in order to run. It's fine if you leave them here when you download your code. The program will just ignore them when it compiles. You can also delete code if you want to declutter your workspace. If you want to get rid of a block, you can simply select it and click Delete. We need to place our code within an event handler so that it will run. Place your temperature variable setter within the forever event handler so that it will read the temperature continuously. The blocks should show their true colors, meaning that this code will work if we upload it to our board. Place your if-then block within the forever event handler as well. We'll use another block from the logic blocks the comparator block. This block can be confusing since it looks very similar to the operator block from the math blocks. The difference is the math block performs operations like addition and multiplication while the comparator block compares values. You'll also notice the math block is purple and the comparator block is green. So drag your comparator block to the if statement and drag your temp variable into the first space, replacing your zero. If the temperature is greater than 30 degrees Celsius, then alert us. Change the equal sign to a greater than sign from the dropdown. Change the zero to a 30. Let's show an alert on the LED grid on the front of our microbit if it gets too hot. You can have the microbit show a number, letters, or even an image. I'm going to show you how to use an image to show us when the temperature changes. Select Show Icon from the Basic Blocks. You can choose a predefined icon from the list. I'll use a scrunched up face since it looks like it's hot. Place it within the then block. What if we want to sound an alarm if our temperature is too cold as well? To do this, click on the Settings button on the If Then statement. Arrange the if and else if blocks on the white canvas and make sure they snap together. Place any extra blocks in the gray area. 
and do the same thing as before but change the comparator to less than. Keep the number as zero. Select basic blocks and choose an icon. I added a surprise face as the alert if it's too cold. It's good practice to add comments to your code so you remember what it's doing. Right click the icon that appears before the words on a block. A menu will pop up. Select add comment. This will cause a question mark to appear to the left of the previous icon. Click on the question mark and a small yellow box will appear into which you can write your comment. Make it informative. If the temperature is too cold or too hot, show an LED alert. If you'd like to show an alert if the temperature isn't too hot or too cold, you can add another else to our if then statement. We use an else here rather than an else if to instruct our microbit what to do if the temperature conditions don't fall within either of the previously defined ranges, greater than 30 or less than zero. Do the same thing as before. You can copy and paste blocks using the Control C and Control V shortcuts. If the temperature is just right, we'll show a smiley face. One of the most important things about teaching students to code is teaching them to think logically. You've probably heard of algorithms. Algorithms are basically sets of instructions or code that takes some input, performs a series of actions, and spits out an output. What you just created is an algorithm. Yep, you can go tell your friends that you wrote an algorithm today. You can test your code by changing the variables slightly. Change the high temperature to one degree higher than the current temperature. And the low temperature to be one degree lower than the current temperature. Download your code and upload it to your board. You probably won't see your smiley face change unless it gets very hot or very cold in your office. Here I have filled a cup of ice. I will hold the micro bit over the ice. Once it cools down one degree Celsius, you'll see the face change to a surprise face. I also have a space heater here. So I'll turn this baby on, heat it up. When I place my micro bit next to the space heater, it quickly warms up and I'll see a scrunched up face. As you can see, this type of project can be useful not only for teaching computer science, but also for teaching other classes as well. You can connect your micro bit to an external thermometer to determine the temperature of a solution or measure soil temperature for a biology experiment. You could even use it to create an interactive art project. Hopefully you feel more confident about teaching your students to code with microbit blocks. If you want more project ideas, you can click the Projects tab at the top of your coding window. Instead of clicking New, click Projects. This has all of the code for MakeCode projects. Click on one and it will create the code for you in your window or walk you through a tutorial. For more resources, go back to microbit.org slash code. You'll see that microbit provides several lesson plans for teaching under lessons. If you're looking to deepen your knowledge, this CS intro course is a great place to start. Finally, if you're just looking for some inspiration, Hackster has a page full of cool microbit projects with complete instructions at hackster.io slash microbit. Thanks for watching Hackster Live.